Hello, today is Tuesday, 12th December 2017. Welcome back to the Q Cast. My name is Nick. And、uh, look, I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everybody who is listening.、Um, I'm actually surprised anybody's listening to this podcast, but look, you guys are great. Thank you for listening to me ramble in my last one. I'll try to make it less rambly. I've written myself a couple of notes this time so that I, I don't go off tangent. Too much. Now, I just wanted to start off at the top of the show, just random things、uh, for anybody who is playing,、uh, keeping score at home. The podcast I'm currently listening to, I wrote this down this time as opposed to last time. I'm listening to the Tim Ferriss podcast.、Um, I'm listening to Trend Settings.、Um, I'm listening to The Daily Wire,、uh, all three of the podcasts in The Daily Wire. I'm also listening to Unfilter. Uh, Gary V and Rebel Force Radio,、uh, which is a Star Wars podcast for anybody else. Who, who, Good, good Star Wars podcast if you're into that sort of stuff.、Um, and also, the Netflix shows that I'm currently watching are The Punisher,、uh, which is pretty good so far. Like, I, I've, I can't get through it in one setting because,、uh, man, it is just a dark show, but I do like where it's going. So,、uh, fingers crossed,、uh, this show will be good towards the end. Frank Castle, though, my man, but man, he's got some issues.、Um, Voltron Legendary Defender, which is the Netflix、um, reboot of the Voltron series. Pretty good, actually. I'm surprised.、Um, I was not expecting it to be good. I'm also looking forward to Troll Hunters, which is coming out on、uh, December 15th. So,、um, looking forward to that rolling around because、uh, the first season, man, Troll Hunters had no business being as good as it is. But, man, what a great animated show.、Um, Jim and Andy, which is the,、uh, the Jim Carrey, Andy Kaufman、um, sort of doco about Jim Carrey becoming Andy Kaufman. So weird, but so interesting.、Um, the Truman Show, I, I just wanted to see The Truman Show again because I just kind of like, I don't know, I feel like Tr- Jim Carrey is coming, having sort of a, a renaissance period. He's coming back into the fold and I kind of like Weird Carrey. He's weird, like weirder. Jim Carrey. I don't know about you guys, but Weird Jim Carrey is kind of interesting at the moment. So, been interesting watching him in interviews. And he's just, he's just out there, man. But I like it. I think it's kind of fun.、Um, and the Beauty and the Beast, the new Beauty and the Beast, the one with、uh, Emma Watson. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I only got through a live, few minutes of it, but、uh, look, it's, it's all right. I, I'm not sure about it yet. So, I'll get back to you about that one.、Um, also, just. Uh, I saw The Room,、um, the Tommy Wiseau masterpiece, The Room, that has been out for a decade. I can't believe I haven't seen it until now.、Um, watched it with Alex. We were laughing pretty much the entire time. It is such a tragic mess, but man, what a movie to watch. Like, it is just, I don't even know how anybody could spend that much money and create a movie like that. It, it's just. It's just so unique. You've never seen anything like it. I, it's, it literally is one of the best, worst movies ever made. And I can't, I can't explain how great this movie is. So if you get a chance to check it out, you definitely should because、um, it is hilarious. In, in light of the Christmas spirit, I thought I might、uh, go into the,、uh, my favorite Christmas movies to, to watch, essentially. Over the years, there's been tons and tons of Christmas movies at one stage. Uh, one of the things I loved at Christmas was actually going to see the、uh, Lord of the Rings movies、uh, at the cinemas on Boxing Day. That was one of my favorite things to do. But during the Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, it's always good to catch up on a couple of these movies that kind of put you in the spirit. Now, I want to give you a couple of movies that can put you in the Christmas spirit. You know, when you finish listening to Michael Bublé,、um, these are the movies you want to be watching、uh, to get you into the mood to, you know, Get you in the mood to basically、uh, sit around your Christmas tree. Who sits around a Christmas tree? To just get you in the mood for Christmas, you know, to put you in that festive spirit. So, without further ado, here is the Christmas movie list a la Nick Koo. First off, It's a Wonderful Life. Great, great movie. Black and White stars Jimmy Stewart. Now, this movie,、uh, at first, my sister dragged me to、uh, watch this movie. I didn't always love. These old school movies, but I gotta say, some of these old movies are classics, and there's a reason for that.、Um, look,、uh, synopsis is this dude, he's having a crappy life, like, you know, he's poor, his family's kind of like a little bit all over the joint,、um, his workplace is just real rubbish, and he just he goes to a bridge and he's gonna end it all. He's about to jump off the bridge when an angel comes up and says, Hey, don't jump off the bridge. And he goes, Well, I just wish I wasn't alive. 
And so the angel goes, well, this is what your life would be like if you were never born and shows him his whole life as if he was never born. And it's this fantastic journey of seeing how important you are in people's lives if you had never existed. And when you get to the end of the movie, it's just all the feels, guys. Like you just want to see this movie and it puts you in the best mood ever. So I recommend it. It's a long haul. I think it's around three hours, but it's a long movie, but it is great. Trust me, you will not be disappointed from watching It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, The second movie I've got on my list is um, A Muppet Christmas Carol. Now, this by far is the greatest Muppets movie ever created. Now, I don't know. It sort of shouldn't work as well as it does, but it is fantastic. The jokes land perfectly. The music is great, uh, except for one song, but everything else, it is great, great performances. Michael Caine is great in this too. Super charming. I mean, I know Michael Caine is super charming in most stuff, but he's really, really charming in this, and he plays a great Scrooge, Kermit, uh, I think it's Gonzo and um, the mouse. I forgot what the rat's called anyway. Can somebody tell me who the rat is? But yeah, the, it's such a great uh, Christmas movie. And uh, man, those mu- that, those tunes just get stuck in your, your head. They're just complete earworms. I tell you, it's a great movie and it puts you in a great mood. Um, now, this one's maybe a little bit more not everybody's uh, p- cup of tea, but Nightmare Before Christmas also, I feel, is a Christmas movie. It's not necessarily a Halloween movie, although it has shades of Halloween in there. But definitely the spirit of that film is a Christmas movie at heart. Great animation, not a Tim Burton film, but also chock full of uh, uh, amazing music as well, especially What's This? You know, what's this? What's this? Is this a little tree? Such a great, great, uh, 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 just a great film. And I, I love the animation. It was kind of before stop animation was really, really cool. I think that was the one that kind of set the bar for everybody else. So set the tone for a lot of uh, stop animation that came later on. Uh, Elf, I re- recently watched Elf again, like yesterday, and um, there's a lot about this movie that I feel shouldn't work. Like, there's a lot, it, it kind of teeters on between being a good movie or, I mean, being a great movie and being a, a, an average movie, like one of those throwaway movies that could have easily ended up in the bargain bin because a lot of the plot points are fairly standard, but it's sort of all elevated because Will Ferrell is just you know, just so likable in this movie. And it stars also a younger, younger pre-superstar Zoe Deschanel. Um, everybody's firing in all cylinders. The jokes totally land. It is such an absurd premise, but it is such a fun movie to watch and uh, always puts you in a good mood as well. Now, the final, uh, the final good spirit movie that I think everybody should watch is, uh, well... Conceivably, the greatest Christmas movie of all time is Die Hard. Yes, Die Hard, starring Bruce Willis, a very young Bruce Willis uh, coming out of Moonlighting. He, uh, I don't think he's been in a better movie since Die Hard. I, I'm not even talking about Sixth Sense. I'm talking about Looper. This is this is Bruce Willis at his absolute best. This is action star Bruce Willis. This is young Bruce Willis. This is char- charismatic Bruce Willis. This could be the best Bruce Willis you'll ever see on screen. I mean, period. But more than that, it's a Christmas movie. Now, let, let me explain to you why Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Apart from the fact that it is set around Christmas, um, it has a Christmas message to it. Let's let's get down to it. So here we go. We've got John McClane. He is our he is our everyday man. He is the man. He comes off a plane. He's tired. We find out that he's uh, divorced from his wife. He's not having a good time with life. He's not enjoying being alive at this point. So, you know, he goes in and he's just he's just going through the motions. And, and Christmas just represents not a great time for him. Just a, a time that just he's just trying to get through. You know, he he just has to do all the Christmassy things and then get back to the mundaneness of his own life. So he can just continue on with the drudgery, which is his current life. But, you know, uh, and so he, he's lost. He's lost and he doesn't understand. He, he doesn't think he has much going for his life. You know, for him, the holidays just represent loneliness, isolation. And uh, yeah, he, 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 we're, we're feeling for him because not, there's not much happening in his life. Now, let's introduce Hans Gruber, the bad guy. Now, Hans Gruber is a metaphor for everything that ruins Christmas, greed, 
like consumer greed. Uh, we we're also talking about arguing, you know, arguing with people, yelling at people. We don't like that at Christmas time. Um, machine guns. Nobody likes machine guns at Christmas. Look, unless you're getting them. No, you can't get machine guns for Christmas, can you? Well, at least not in Australia. I don't think you can in America either. Anyway, Hans Gruber represents all that's bad about Christmas. And so look, John McClane has to make a choice. He either needs to try and save the people that he loves or cares about and also in turn try and save Christmas. So in the end, he finds value in himself. He also realizes what's important in life. And um, he realizes that protecting the people he loves is actually what he was born to do. He finds his purpose. Uh, And so Christmas now represents him finding purpose, finding meaning, fighting the bad guys. It's it's an amazing, amazing uh, character journey this movie. So that's that's what I'm trying to get to you guys is realizing that uh, a Die Hard is is all of us. Um, he represents us, the average person who has had life beat us down. And sometimes we lose perspective and we we get down in ourselves. And Christmas can be uh, a time that amplifies the fact that some of the things that we did during the year weren't so great or didn't turn out the way that we wanted it to. But with a little perspective change. Uh, and a few dozen terrorists attempting to rob a building you're in, um, you may finally realize that life is truly wonderful after all. Anyway, guys, that has been today's podcast. There will be another one in a few more days, um, probably on Thursday or Friday. I'm not really sure when, but um, I'm trying to keep this as regular as I can. I hope this has been interesting. Merry Christmas to all of you guys, and yippee ki to all, and to all, a good night.